Okay, so today we're going to go over uh, section 7.2 and section uh, 7.3. Um, we took uh, last week off, um, and so then everything has gotten delayed one week. We were supposed to have a test this week, and um, uh, uh, we didn't. Uh, everything's been delayed a week, so everything's been pushed back a week. So we will figure out um, how to uh, uh, take the test next Wednesday. So your test will uh, will be on next Wednesday. Um, probably not going to be back in class, and so then we're, it, it will be a take home test. I will upload it to uh, Canvas. Um, you will print it. Uh, take it, uh, you will have uh, an hour and a half, uh, I'll, I'll make it two hours, you, you will have two hours to upload it, print it, take it, uh, take pictures of it, and um, email it back to me. Okay, um, so that's how we're going to take care of the test next week, and um, so... For right now, we're going to cover sections 7.2 and 7.3, and we're going to be talking about spanning trees and Kruskal's algorithm. Um, the other thing is, um, any questions, email them to me. If you are trying a problem and get stuck, best thing is to um, take a picture of your work, uh, up, uh, email it to me, uh, attach it as, uh, as a PDF, and then um, I will look over your work and try and uh, um, explain where I think you've gone wrong. Um, I will make a video of it and uh, upload that. And um, so then if, in case anybody else has a similar problem uh, or you, know, you can learn from what other people are doing, uh, we can go through it that way. Um, so, if you see a problem on the video, something I made a mistake that uh, that uh, uh, you don't understand, um, you know, do something similar, and I will uh, we will communicate by you sending me um, emails. And if you want to make a video and send me a video, that's fine, um, and I will then respond to your questions uh, via videos. It's very difficult to communicate through just email uh, with math, but we're we're going to do the best that we can. So let's move on and talk about spanning trees, right? So when you have a network, um, then if you uh, uh, have n vertices and n minus one edges, then you have a tree. If you have more than uh, uh, n minus one vertices, if m is greater than n minus one, then you have some redundancy. You, you have some edges that you can do away with. And so uh, for convenience, we will refer to R as the redundancy as M, the number of edges you have, minus N minus one, the number of edges uh, that you need to uh, form a tree. And so then uh, M minus the quantity, M minus the quantity N minus one is called the redundancy of the network. So if m is equal to n minus 1, the network is a tree. If m is greater than n minus 1, the network has circuits and is not a tree, right? So turns out that you're going to have circuits if you have redundancy. And so then um, you, so then you need to keep track of that. Okay, so in the case of a network with positive redundancy, there are many trees within the network that connect the vertices. These are the spanning trees of the network. So we're interested in trees um, that still connect all the vertices, um, but they are trees. So it says here, uh, consider the network shown in figure 727. Find a spanning tree of the network. Calculate the redundancy of the network. And what is the diameter of the network? Again, a great thing to try here is to um, uh, pause the problem, pause the video, Instead of just sitting here and staring and uh, um, pause the video, uh, try the problem on your own and then see uh, uh, how you did by continuing to play the video. Okay, so find a spanning tree of the network. So a network is just a connected graph, right? So that's all it is, right? Um, we have vertices. We have uh, one, two, three, four rows of vertices. I'm sorry, four 
vertices in each row and we have uh, one, two, three, four rows. So we have six, four times 16, 16 vertices. And so then um, we then know that uh, n is equal to 16. And so then uh, to find a spanning tree, we need a, 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 a graph with only 15 vertices. So again, we're just trying to connect all the vertices. And again, you'll know you'll have a tree if you don't have any circuits. So to find a spanning tree, lots of different spanning trees you can make. Just don't make any circuits and you have a spanning tree, right? So again, if I go up here, then I will have a circuit and then um, it, it, it will not be a tree. So just continue making edges. Can't go here because if I do that, then um, I'll have a circuit. So I can go here. Um, I can go here, no circuits there. I can go here. Um, I can go here. I can go here, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here. You may have a different spanning tree than I do, but if you did this correctly, you will have 15 edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, uh, 11, 12, uh, let me count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm supposed to have 15. And so then um, I am either counted wrong, didn't count one, or um, I am not connected. And I see the one that I didn't count. It's this one right here. Since I have my 14, this is 15, right? And so, um, because I have 16 vertices and I have 15 edges um, and my graph is connected, I know this is a tree. And what that means is um, that I can get from any vertex to any other vertex, right? So calculate the uh, redundancy of the network. So um, to calculate the redundancy of the network, you can uh, use the formula R is equal to M minus uh, N minus one. And basically again, going over this formula, um, M is the number of edges that you do have, N minus one, which uh, is the number of edges you need to be a tree. Um, so N is the number of vertices, N minus one, uh, is 15, so you would need 15 vertices. I'm sorry, 15 edges to be a tree, and so then you have to so you have to take away that uh, from how many edges you actually have. So if you notice, you have horizontal edges one, two, three, um, three horizontal uh, edges in each row, and you have one, two, three, four rows. So then M is 12 horizontal edges. And then you can do the same thing. You have one, two, three vertical edges uh, in each uh, row here. And you have one, two, three, four rows. And so you have another 12. And so you have a total of 24 edges, right? And so you have 24 edges in total. So then your redundancy is your 24 take away the number of edges that um, it takes to be a tree. So the 16 minus one is just how many edges you need to be a tree. So 24 minus uh, 15. Which is nine. So you have nine extra edges. And now, unfortunately, I uh, erased my tree so that it can make it easier to count. 
Um, but if you look at your tree and then um, uh, your spanning tree in part A and counted the edges that you didn't use, you should have nine edges. Right, so that would be a good um, check there. Okay, so what is the diameter of the network? So if you remember, the diameter of the network um, was the uh, degree of separation, the biggest degree of separation for um, any two vertices. So um, it seems like the two farthest points that are vertices that are apart are A and G. Um, you know, you could have used D and J or something like that. Um, but those are separated. No matter how you go, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can uh, play around with that, but there's no way to get there uh, from A to G using less than six edges. And so then that is the diameter of separation. Uh, I'm sorry, that is the diameter. That is the degree of separation from A to G, and there aren't any two that are farther apart. So then um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Let's move on. Um, so um, counting spanning trees. One of the things we're going to do in this section is we're going to count, well, how many spanning trees uh, does a network have? The network in the figure has n equals eight vertices and m equals eight uh, edges. Uh, so then the redundancy is uh, uh, it would take seven edges to form a tree when you have eight vertices. So how many extra edges do you have? Eight minus seven is one. So R equals M minus N. So instead of you know following this formula right here, R equals M minus N minus one, um, you could think, okay, well, this is how many edges I have, and this is how many edges it takes to have uh, a tree. How many extra edges? That's what, that's what the redundancy is, right? So you have one extra edge. So to find a spanning tree, we will have to discard one edge. So um, if we keep our network connected and we take out uh, one edge, uh, then the number of vertices, uh, the number of edges will be one less than the number of vertices and we will uh, definitely have a tree. That's what's going on here. We have eight vertices. If we keep the, uh, the network connected and we remove one, edge, then the number of edges will be uh, seven, which is what we need to be a tree, right? But we, we got to be careful, right? Because if we remove uh, A, B, then my network will no longer be connected. We, there will be no path. So then what you're going to want to do is make sure that you do not remove uh, a bridge, right? So th that's the vocabulary. The, the edge A, B is a bridge. Once we remove that, we, we can't get from H to B or from A to B, um, and we have a disconnected graph, right? And so then the edges that we're going to remove um, are going to be the edges of a circuit. Because if you have a circuit, like we have this circuit right here, and you remove any one of these edges, right? You take out that edge, then you can, since, the, since you had a circuit, that was not a bridge. And so your graph remains connected. And um, now you only have seven edges. So now you are looking at a tree. Okay, so uh, five of these edges are bridges of the network and they will have to be part of any spanning tree. The other three edges, right? So the, 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 the other three edges, BC, uh, CG, and GB, uh, form a circuit of length three. And if we exclude any one of the three vertices, I'm sorry, any one of the three edges, then we will have a spanning tree. Because we are looking inside a circuit, removing any one of these, um, removing any one of these, your graph will still be connected, but you will then have a, uh, uh, so that you will have a seven edges and that's the number that we need to have a tree. And thus, the network has three different spanning trees, right? One for each edge of that circuit. So you could remove BC like you did here, and you're a tree. And you could remove uh, uh, GC like we did here. Let me get my laser pointer. You can remove uh, GC like you did here. 
or you can remove uh, BG like we did here, right? And so then all these three uh, trees are different and th these three trees are all different and they are all spanning trees. Okay, so now let's go practice some of this. Again, um, best, uh, best case is that you uh, take a moment to do this problem on your own, practice the vocabulary and come back and see um, what uh, w how I did it and make sure that y you are understanding. Sometimes there's more than one way to do the problem and so that's fine, um, but make sure that they both make sense. So in this section, in this problem, it says find all the spanning trees of the network shown in the figure 731, right? And so practicing our vocabulary, right? We have uh, N is the number of vertices. N is one, two, three, four, five, six. N is six. And so then a spanning tree uh, will only need five edges. Uh, M is the number of edges. And we have one, two, three four, five, six. M is six. So you can see that we need to remove one edge, right? Again, we only want to remove bridges. I'm sorry, we don't want to remove bridges. We only want to uh, break up circuits, right? So we look in, so when you're looking to see where, uh, what edges can I get rid of? You're gonna get rid of edges that form a circuit. And so there is one circuit right here a, A, C, B, A. And so then you can see that removing any one of those uh, three edges will get you a, um, will get you a, uh, uh, a tree. So D, E, A, B, F. Okay, so we need to break up this circuit right here. Uh, DA is a bridge, got to use that. EB is a bridge, got to use that. But we can take out AB and still use the rest of the graph. And so now you're connected. You, re re you removed one, um, one edge, and so now you have a spanning tree. Um, again, we need D, A, and E, B. We also need C, F. Um, we already removed A, B. So now we won't remove that one. We'll remove either A, C, or B, C. And when we remove A, C, we get this tree. And last, um, we need our bridges in our circuit was right here. And we've already removed uh, um, this one here, AC. So now we'll remove BC and we get this circuit. Um, so we had a circuit that had three edges. We could remove any one of the three edges. AB we removed here. AC we removed here and BC we removed here and we end up with only um, five edges. One, two, three, four, five. And um, we remove only, uh, we removed five edges and so we're a tree and we're good. So here, this is just asking how many different spanning trees does the network shown have, right? And so then um, again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12 vertices. So all we need is um, 11 edges. So n is equal to 12. To get a tree, we need 11. And so then what we have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, and so we have 12. So then the redundancy, right, is the number of edges that we have, 12, minus how many edges do we need for a tree? One less than 12, 11. And so we have um, a redundancy of one, right? And so that means we only have one extra edge. But it can't just be any edge, right? We need to break up a circuit. So I did a little bit more work than I had to, uh, because if you're doing this problem, uh, you should look and realize that there is only one circuit, and it's right here in the middle. And th that circuit consists of one, two, three, four, five, six edges. You can take out any one of those six edges, and then you will have a spanning tree. Um, but this, uh, uh, but this is the only circuit, and so then w that is the only way to get a spanning tree. So there was really no need for all these computations, um, but. It does help to know that our redundancy is one, so we have to reduce one edge. And so then, um, um, and that we want to break up the circuits, so we can just uh, take out one of these circuits. So then, um, there we go. And so then the answer is our circuit has six edges. We can remove any one of them. Six spanning trees. How many different spanning trees does the network have? Six of them. OK, let's look at uh, something a little bit more complicated. Uh, the network in figure, uh, the network in the figure has m equals 9 edges and n equals 8 vertices. And the redundancy of the network is 2. You have 9 edges. All you really need is, um, I'm sorry, you have uh, 8 vertices. So all you need is seven uh, edges for a tree. To be a tree, we have nine. So nine minus seven is two. Uh, so to find a spanning tree, we will have to discard two edges. We're going to have to get rid of two edges. Edges AB and AH are bridges of the network, so they will have to be part of the spanning tree. And the other seven edges are split into two separate circuits. So we have the circuit B, C, G, B. And then we have this other circuit over here, um, C, D, E, F, and back to C. A spanning tree can be found by busting each of the two circuits. This means excluding any one of the, the three edges of the circuit B, C, G, B, and any one of the four edges of the circuit C, D, E, F, C. Uh, for example, if we exclude B, C, and C, D, we get the spanning tree shown, right? So one way of doing that is to uh, uh, bust up this circuit here by taking out B, C, and bust up this circuit here by taking out ED. We could also exclude BC and DE to get the spanning tree shown. We could also exclude um, BC and DE. And this is not right. We could also exclude It looks like they're excluding CG and a CD. And we get this tree shown. Okay. So um, 
what we want to do is we want to count how many different trees we can get, right? So how many different trees we can get out of this. Now, um, in this case, we have two circuits that do not share an edge in common, right? There is no edge that is on both circuits, right? So um, if there was only one circuit, if there was only this circuit here, then um, there would be uh, three different ways of getting a tree out of that. And if there was only uh, this circuit here, then there would be four different ways of getting a tree out of that. Um, but because we need to break up both of them, and we, we've gone over the fundamental counting principle before, if there are three ways to break up this one and three and four ways to break up this one, then there are three times four ways uh, to, 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 uh, to break them both up. And so that means then um, we get 12 different ways to choose an edge from the uh, circuit of length three and an edge from the circuit of length four. Uh, there are 12 spanning trees. We have already shown two. Here's one more. So then here's one more right here. Okay. So again, in this problem, uh, we are not interested in um, actually finding all the different spanning trees. Uh, we're just asking how many different spanning trees does the network shown have, right? And so then again, you should try to do this problem on your own. Pause the video and do your work. Okay, so we look and we realize that there are uh, two separate circuits, so one right here and one right here. So when we only had one circuit, uh, we would look and see that there are one, two, three, four edges. And so then um, we would have four different trees that we could get by taking out any one of those edges. But at the same time, we also have to break up this one over here. So then there are four edges that we can cut out over here. So then we get four times four, and that makes 16 total possible trees. All right, so that's how we do that. Uh, so it's something a little bit more complicated. Uh, this network has m equals nine edges and n equals eight vertices. So again, um, our redundancy is again two. Uh, what is different about this and the uh, previous example is that our circuits here actually share an edge in common, right? So here the circuits B, C, G, B, and C, D, E, G share a common edge, C, G. So they both share this edge right here, C, G. And so that uh, changes things a little bit, right? Because um, we can't just do, okay, um, there's four ways, uh, three ways to break up this one and four ways to break up this one because some of those ways are, uh, are the same, right? And so then we have to be careful with how we count, right? Determining which pairs of edges can be excluded in this space, in this case is a bit more complicated. So let me go over how to do that, right? So um, we're just gonna break it up into two separate cases, right? We're gonna break it up into the case where we, uh, uh, one, we need to take, we need to get rid of two edges. So case one, we're going to take out this edge here, uh, CG. Case one. Remove CG. Once we remove CG, um, then you can see that we need to remove another one, but there's only one, two, three, four, five. There's five ways to do that. And you get, so you, if you remove CG, uh, there's five different circuits that you can make, right? If you uh, do not remove case two, you do not remove CG, So let me get rid of that. We're not going to remove that. Um, and so then uh, to break up uh, the circuit B, G, C, B, we either have to break up uh, B, C or B, G, 
right? We either have to take out BC or BG. Either one will do because you're just taking away a circuit. So there's two ways to break up the the the, the three um, edge circuit, right? But then you also have to uh, break up the the four circuit, and you can't remove CG because we've already accounted for all the ways that you could do that. And so then you could you could take out either CD, DE or EG. So there's three ways to break up the second circuit, two times three, right? And so then, um, so that's six. So uh, you broke this down into two separate cases, one in which you removed CG, and there's five ways to do that, and one in which you did not remove CG, and that was uh, six ways to do that, and that's all the different ways, right? And so then five plus six is 11. So there's 11 different ways that you, the 11 different trees that you can make out of this. Right? So again, um, try the next problem. Pause the video, try the problem, and then um, go from there. Uh, so consider the network shown in figure 735. How many different spanning trees does this network have? Right, um, and so then again, um, what you should notice is that you have two circuits, this one right here and this one right here, and that they share an edge in common. They share the edge uh, CI in common. So again, we will um, break it up into two cases remove the edge CI and then don't remove CI. This will account for everything. And if we remove CI, we get rid of this edge, then we have uh, one big circuit um, that has one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so let me go ahead and number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's, you could take out either uh, any one of those. And so then you are going to have eight ways, right? Now, if we don't remove CI, Um, then we're going to keep CI, and so to break up our circuits, we have uh, we have uh, uh, to break up this little circuit on the left. We could take out one, two, three. We have three choices, and so we have three ways to do that. Times, then to break up this one, and we're not removing CI. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have three times five, which is fifteen. And so then, if you have the eight plus the fifteen. Then um, you have 23. So how many different spanning trees does this network have? 23. And then we have some conditions that we want to meet. So it says find a spanning tree that has the largest degree of separation between H and J. So if you want a large degree of separation and you uh, have to remove um, two edges, right? Um, you have to remove two edges because you have two circuits and you want to break up both circuits. But you have to break up both circuits. Well, obviously, it uh, seems like we need to get rid of this one so that they're... Uh, H and J so that they will then be farther apart. And so we've already broken up um, this circuit right here. Um, but now we still have this circuit right here. And again, we want to go a long ways uh, around. So we want to remove this one right here. And then that will force me uh, to go all the way around here. And then instead of coming down this way, um, then I'd have to come over here, go here, go here, and that will uh, increase the distance that I have to go. 
And so there we go. Okay. Find a spanning tree that has the smallest degree of separation uh, between K and G. And so now we want to um, have the smallest degree of separation between K and G. And so um, actually, well, what did we say? Let's, uh, so let's, um, let's go back to part B. Find a spanning tree that has the largest degree of separation between H and J. So we had to remove that one and then remove that one. So that's how we'll label it. We should label this, right? So when I grade your work, you should know how to write your work. No need to, no need to recopy the thing. Just say the 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 network. Just say remove IH. And um, CI. Okay, let's go back. Now we're on C. Uh, find a spanning tree that has the smallest degree of separation between K and G. So now we want K and G to be as close as possible. G is over here. And so that means then um, I, uh, I still need to break up this circuit, um, but I don't want to uh, cause me to go uh, farther around than I have to. So then I can go one, two, three, and if I took out um, this thing, then I uh, then um, I'm sorry. If I took out uh, either this or this, then I would be uh, I would be forcing myself to go longer around. So I do have to break up this one. So different ways to do that. I can take out this one, and now I've broken up this circuit, and I can take out this one, and then I've broken up this circuit over here. So there are no circuits, and so now I don't have to do redundancy or any of that i just i have no circuits so my um so i have a tree it's still connected and i have a tree and so then we can remove uh bk and de and there we go Okay, so um, again, in, uh, in in real life, um, these things come up, and then what we're interested in is minimizing the cost or maybe possibly maximizing the profit, depending on what things mean. So this example builds on the ideas introduced in example 7.2. Um, the network shown in uh, shown in is the same network as in example 7.2. Now the weights added, now with weights added to the edges. Vertices represent computer labs and edges are potential ethernet connections. The weights represent the cost in thousands, 1K is equal to 1,000, of, of installing ethernet connections. Using the ter terminology we introduced in this section, the weighted network has a redundancy of three. The network has uh, 14 edges and 12 vertices. And so then to get a tree, we only need 11 edges. So 14 minus 11 is three. So we dump three edges. The network has many possible spanning trees and our job is to find the one with the least weight. That is the minimum spanning tree, MST, for the network. We know that we can find a spanning tree by excluding edges of the network those that uh, close circuits from the spanning tree and that there are many different ways in which this can be done. Given that the edges now have weights, a reasonable strategy for sorting through the options would be to always try to exclude from the network the most expensive edges. Uh, to illustrate the point, let's look at circuit B, C, D, E, B on the left. Of this uh, of the network, it makes sense to exclude CD. So uh, CD is the most expensive edge on that um, uh, circuit. We want to bust up circuits, and so then there we go, and that gets rid of that edge, which costs ninety five thousand dollars to build. Let's 
likewise on the right side, so we've already taken this out, uh, we have a configuration of two circuits, a K I K, K H I K, and K J I K, that share a common edge K I. Now we exclude the two most uh, expensive edges from these two circuits, KJ, uh, from these two circuits, KJ and KI. And so then we just get rid of the, the most expensive ones, uh, KJ and KI. At this point, all the circuits of the original network are busted, and we end up with the red spanning tree shown, right? So this is a spanning tree. We've gotten rid of the most expensive ones, right? But the question is, is the red spanning tree obtained in example 7.6 the minimal spanning tree of the original network? We would like to think it is, but how can we be sure, especially after the lessons learned in Chapter 6? And even if it is, what assurances do we have that our stra simple strategy will work in more complicated graphs? These are the questions we will answer next. We are moving on to section 7.3. And in section 7.3, because we're dealing with networks and trying to make trees, um, this is going to be easier than the traveling salesman problems. Um, and Kruskal's algorithm, which is a modification of what we just went over in the last example, uh, turns out to be um, turns out to be what's going to work. And so then um, going back to the Amazonian cable network, part two, what is the optimal fiber optic cable network connecting the seven towns shown? The weighted graph shows the cost in millions of dollars of laying cable lines along each of the potential links of the network. Uh, the answer, as we now know, is to find the minimal spanning tree of the graph. We will use Al uh, Kruskal's algorithm to do it. And what is Kruskal's algorithm? Here it is. It's very close to the, um, to the nearest neighbor algorithm, but it's even easier. Right? So step one, pick the cheapest link available. In case of a tie, pick one at random. Mark it, say, in red. Step two, pick the next cheapest link available and mark it. Steps three, four, all the way to n minus one. Continue picking and marking the cheapest unmarked link available that does not create a circuit. So you're just not allowed to create circuits. You want to stay away from circuits. And uh, you, when you're done, you will have the uh, um, uh, minimal spanning tree. So let's go back to our example here. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertices. Um, and so that means then that we need uh, six edges, right? So since we need six edges, uh, we just uh, pick six edges. Um, a, of, of least cost. And once we pick six edges of least cost, as long as we are avoiding circuits, we will we are guaranteed to have a tree. And um, it turns out that this will be the minimum spanning tree. Easy enough, right? So you just scan 55, 59, 62, 42, 74, 49, 51, 45, 53. So it looks like the cheapest is 42. We take that edge mark it in red okay um, then we can now we look for the next cheapest one and so now we're uh, edge number two 45 is the next cheapest one um, no possibility uh, of closing a circuit because these are so far away but at step three is where you could be closing a circuit so you got to be careful with that uh, but here uh, 49 no closing of a circuit, so we're there. Um, it looks like the next cheapest one is over here at 51, but that would close the circuit, and a, 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 minimum, a, 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 a tree cannot have circuits, so we cannot use that one. Um, but there is another 51 uh, over here, and this one does not close a circuit. 
So we can use that one. And then after 51, uh, there's a 53 here, which does not close the circuit. And so we can use that one. Uh, we have um, one, two, three, four, five. We just need one more. Uh, we can't use 55. That'll close the circuit. We can't use 64. That'll close the circuit. We can't use 56. That will close the circuit. Um, we can either use 59 or 62. And of course, we're going to use the cheapest one. And so there we go. That is the minimal spanning tree. Um, if you uh, wanted to find the total cost, you would just add up all the weights. Um, and so then if you add up all the weights, uh, you get 299, right? So $299,000, uh, the weights were the, the cost in thousands. Mm, nope, th that was somewhere else. Okay, but 299 is the, is the weight. So here we have our problem um, for the network shown in figure 742. Find the minimal spanning tree of the network using Kruskal's algorithm. Okay, so again, um, I strongly recommend that you pause the video and that you try this on your own. And then that way you could uh, make sure that you know what you're doing so that when it comes time to do the homework, you can do the homework. So pause the video, try the problem, and then come back. Okay, so let me go over this. So again, we have, first thing you should do is figure out how many vertices you have. One, two, I'm missing a C here. Oh no, no, C is over here. Three, four, five. Um, so you have five vertices. So then you know that you are looking for um, four edges, right? One less than the number of vertices. So four edges is all you're looking for. So you look for the cheapest edge, and then that would be this one right here. And then we have a 2.4. And that would be this one right here. And then um, 3.1, 4.1, 3.3. We only need 4, 3.1. We just do not want to close any circuits. And so then we have 3.3, but that would close a circuit. We All we need is one more. Um, 3.2 is over here. And that does not close a circuit. And we have a minimal spanning tree, right? Uh, three six, three eight. Make sure that there are, there isn't anything less than three two, um, and there isn't uh, the three, the three three. We couldn't use because it was more than the three two, and it would close the circuit. So, either way, this is it. So here's your homework uh, for the remainder of this chapter. Uh, so your test will be one week from today. Um, so then on, uh, on Monday, I will post a review video. Um, and then, um, in the meantime, you should be doing your homework. I will, uh, post either later today or tomorrow, um, instructions on how to, uh, upload your homework. And so the homework that is due this week is the homework from the week prior to uh, um, the shutdown. Um, and so then um, next week, we will then collect the homework that I assigned this week. Okay.